Today, I would like to talk about a topic that's very prevalent in K through 12 education today. And I know that some of my school administrator colleagues and fellow educators may be upset with me by the time I get finished, but I think I need to speak on this topic anyway. The topic that I like to talk, like to talk about is none other than attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. Now, before I get started, I would like to say that I am not a clinical psychologist, pediatrician, or psychiatrist, all right? I'm a school administrator who has more than 20 years of education working with students and families that has been diagnosed with this particular disorder. I'm also a researcher, so I think that uh, my opinion does have value in this particular case. So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD, uh, when students have this particular disorder, they're normally diagnosed with being uh, impulsive, not being able to focus or sit for prolonged periods of time. And students that have this particular disorder are generally prescribed medication. Uh, there are about five to seven different types of medication, uh, but some of the more uh, common ones are Adderall, Methylene, and Ritalin. Now, Methylene and Ritalin uh, has a chemical in it called methylphenidate, and Adderall has a chemical called uh, dextrophenamine. These chemicals are what you would call stimulants. In layman or street terms, they're called speed. Now, when I was researching this topic, I wondered to myself, why would doctors prescribe speed to give to students that are hyper? And what I learned is that uh, when you give speed to a person at a certain level or dosage, it actually causes the brain to speed up quickly and it shuts down. So when you give your child Ritalin or Adderall, uh, it's basically desensitizing your child and causing their brain to shut down and not function at its normal capacity. And what happens is the child get caught up in a vicious cycle because the moment that the drug wears off or the, if the child forgets to take the medication, then they'll get a burst of energy. And that burst of energy comes from the brain trying to reboot itself and reach equilibrium. But the adults will look at it and say, oh, the child is being hyper. We need to put him back or put him or put her back on meds. But really, that's the brain trying to work through the medication and get back to being normal. And because the, the child is being uh, behavior is being misinterpreted uh, by the adults, the child gets put back on medicine and then it just becomes a cycle. All right, and then what makes matters worse is that these medications uh, have some very harmful side effects. All right, number one, uh, one side effect is weight loss, uh, loss of appetite, uh, trouble sleeping, and the biggest problem is it can contribute to uh, heart problems and complications. So what I've noticed is that there has been an increase with uh, Ritalin prescriptions and students diagnosed with ADHD uh, with the increase in use of standardized testing. Also with the increase of standardized testing is schools have become more restrictive in their operations towards students. I remember back when I was a child, I used to get anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour of recess per day in addition to about 30 to 40 minutes of lunchtime. But nowadays, uh, there, is, there isn't any more recess, and students barely get 30 minutes of lunchtime. So by the time students get through their lunch line and eat their food, they, they barely have five to 10 minutes to go outside and play. And then the schools are so restrictive now, they want students to, uh, even when they're at lunch, to sit still, be quiet, eat your food. And if they get out of line, if they speak out, or if they move, then they can't go outside. And a lot of teachers are using uh, this as a disciplinary issue. So if they talk out of turn, they get up out their seat, they can't go outside for lunch. All right. So what's happening is students are having all of this bottled up energy, and particularly young men. They have this bottled up energy that's not being released. And then they go to the classroom, and guess what happens? They have to sit down, be quiet, take notes, and listen to the teacher lecture. All right. So this restrictiveness is one of the leading causes, because as soon as uh, the student moves, 
uh, walks out of line, don't raise their hand, then all of a sudden they get punished. And if this happens too long, uh, then they get referred to the psychologist and then they're being tested and so on and so forth. So from my understanding and from my years of experience, a lot of the diagnosis are being uh, missed. A lot of students are being misdiagnosed. And one of the leading, leading causes of this misdiagnosis is teachers not delivering quality instruction. And when I say quality instruction, I mean instruction that actually engages the learner in activities that's connected to their learning styles, uh, activities in which they get to dialogue with their peers, they get to work in groups, they get to use their hands, they get to move, they get to uh, do presentations. They're active part of the classroom instead of having to sit still in a docile manner and listen to the teacher lecture for day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. I know a lot of adults who can't sit and listen to someone speak to them for 10 minutes, let alone a whole uh, entire school year. So we expect for young children to sit still over a prolonged period of time. And when you think about it, some of the, the, the symptoms uh, for ADHD, they're very vague. Uh, a student can't focus for a long period of time. Students are impulsive. Students can't sit still. But that's regular childlike behavior. And in most cases, children grow out of that. And it's another thing point that I like to mention is that uh, ADHD is based on the evaluator's professional opinion. It's not like it's a real uh, disease or anything like that. It, it can't really be proven. It's based on the evaluators, the psychologists, the doctors, professional opinion. All right, so people are making opinions about your child and they're prescribing them these dangerous drugs and medication because of an opinion. So what I'm saying to all the parents is that uh, if your child falls in the realm of having what that you think the child may have ADHD or the school wants to test your child, make sure that you get multiple opinions from professionals. Don't go with the first opinion that you get from the school. Not saying that your school is trying to uh, purposefully do something negligent to your child, but you need to get uh, more opinions and don't go with the first one. Also, if your child falls in that realm, you need to also do uh, alternative things uh, before giving your child the medicine. The, the, the most important thing that you can do uh, to change your child's behavior is to refrain from white sugar and, and white processed flour because those things can contribute to your child's deficiencies. Uh, a lot of times when students that have ADHD, their diets are heavily in sugar heavily based in sugar. They eat a lot of sweets in the morning, they eat sweets in the lunch, they eat sweets at night, they eat sweets for snacks. So if you can reduce or eliminate the type of, uh, the amount of sugar that your child receives, you'll definitely see a change in their behavior over time. So all I can say in summary is have all the information, uh, do your diligent research and get multiple opinions before you start uh, allowing people to prescribe your child medication for ADHD.